Hey everybody, good morning. Pastor Brendan Witten here back with you for another Faith Fuel video devotional. We are finishing up today our first week in our study on being prisoners of hope in this season. God just has so much that he wants to speak to us about hope. And there's so much that he wants to do in our lives in the area of hope. And so let's dive right into things. If you're Tuning in, uh, you know, online live. Welcome, good to see you. Thank you once again for joining us. Just throw a comment up in the uh, in the chat box as well, just to let people know that you're here. Uh, and if you're tuning in on demand, it's great to have you as well. Let's dive right in and talk some more about hope and being prisoners of hope. Zechariah nine verse twelve says this: "Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double." So again, quick review. Our focus has been on hope and being prisoners of hope. We really feel like in the end of 2020 into 2021, God is saying to us, stir up your hope, renew your hope, come into a fresh place of hope because of what I am going to do. Uh, the definition of hope is from Steve Backland, and I love it. It says this, Bible hope is a joyful, confident expectation that good is coming. And we've been focusing on the fact that as Christians, we should be the most hopeful people that you ever meet. We should be the most hopeful people in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, in, in, in our schools. I, mean, I know it's not the case, but it should be the case. And the reason is why. So that's what we've been talking about. Why should I be someone filled with hope? What are the reasons why I should, like, what are, what are the reasons for hope? Why should I be so filled with hope? So we've talked about a number of things this week. We've talked about the fact that we should be hopeful because we've got God. Uh, not just that, but we've talked about the fact we should be hopeful because this God loves us. Also talked about the fact that we should have radical hope because he's given us his word. And yesterday we talked about the fact that we've been saved, that he saved us. And we are prisoners. We can't help but be prisoners of hope because he has saved us. So today I want to just go into Jeremiah 29, 11. It's a verse you're very familiar with. But I want to talk to you about the fact that we should have hope because God has a plan for our lives. Right? We should be filled with hope. Because we know and we understand that God has a plan for our lives. Come on, wherever you are right now, I want you just to say, God has a plan for my life. I'm serious. Say it. Just say it right now. Say, God has a plan for my life. Right? When you understand that God has a plan for your life, you cannot help but be filled with hope. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. I, I know this verse is, is well known. It's probably one of those verses that most people know about. And everyone's going to hear people criticize about. But I just love to read it simply for what it is. Right? I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Right? So he knows he has plans already. And plans for welfare and not for evil. Another translation is for good, not for evil. To give you a future and to give you a hope. In other words, God has got these plans for our lives. And part of these plans are to give us a future and to give us hope. So let's break this down for a couple minutes here. So first and foremost, I want to talk about the fact, I want to encourage you the fact that God has a plan for your life. Now I know some people listen and say, well, of course, that's not so well, I don't want us to miss this revelation. God has a plan for your life. God, you are not an accident. You are not here just to kind of take up space. God didn't say, you know, well, I, I need some people to, to fill up the church so Brendan can preach to them. So I'm going to create this person. No, no. That you were created with a purpose. You were created with destiny. You were created with promise over your life. You've been created with a plan that God has for your life. You are not an accident. And you are not just as you look to the future, kind of, well, maybe something good will happen. I, you know, I hope something good will come. No, no, when you look for the future, you know God's got a plan for my life. Not only does God have a plan, but we see here God's got a good plan. Now, the fact that God has a good plan doesn't mean we'll never face bad things. It doesn't ever mean we'll not have difficult times. But in the middle of it all, we can trust the goodness of God. And we can trust the fact that God has a good plan for our lives. Some of us struggle to yield to God. You know, we were talking several lessons ago about just this whole element of surrendering. If God is all-powerful, almighty, he loves us, he knows what's going on, why would we not surrender to him? Why would we still try and do it ourselves? Right? Why are you going to try and fly the plane when you don't even know what you're doing, but you've got the world's best pilot sitting next to you? Let him fly the plane. Right? Well, in the same way, when we understand that God knows all, he sees all, and we say, okay, he's got a plan for my life, and he's got a good plan, it's like, I'm going to trust him regarding my life. Many people, they struggle because they don't believe God has a good plan for their life. 
Their thought is if I really submit to God, if I yield to God, he's going to make me do things I don't want to do. He's going to make me marry someone I don't want to marry. He's going to make me go somewhere I don't want to go. And there's all this fear because we don't understand his character. But see, when we understand his character, we understand that he has a plan for our lives. He has a good plan for our lives. It totally flips the script and it changes our perspective. Furthermore, not just God have a plan for our life, not just a good plan for our life, but God created you with this plan in mind. And he actually perfectly fashioned you for the plan and call that he had called you to. Right? Ephesians 2 verse 10 says this in the New Living Translation. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. In other words, God didn't create you. And they go, oh, oh no, I didn't come up with a plan for their life. Okay, Jesus, let's, let's figure something out here. Let's just get something out. No, no. God had actually already planned what needed to happen, and then he formed you for that plan, right? He perfectly created and molded and formed you. It was not just you kind of by accident coming to be, but he perfectly created. He perfectly formed you. He perfectly designed you. He gave you a certain personality type. He gave you certain talents and abilities. He gave you certain likes and dislikes. And it's not that we never have to die to our flesh or lay some things down, but but here's the, it's fine. There's such a, a kind of connotation, again, where some people, because you hear me even saying that, it's like, yeah, but you know, you gotta die to yourself. You gotta, yeah, I know that. But here's the deal. Jesus died, but then he rose again. He didn't stay in the grave. You're not supposed to live in the grave. You're going to go through seasons where you've got to die to yourself, but a death always leads to a resurrection, right? That's the way it goes. And so, so here's the point. God created you perfectly for this plan that he put in place. He already saw it. And see, when you get that, you have hope. You know, I was thinking about this recently because I was thinking about just hope in my life. And I, I started to think about, thought, man, because for me, there's just this kind of underlining theme that's woven into my perspective that God's got a plan for my life and that I can trust him. That I am where I am now in my life, not just by happenstance or by chance, but because I've been following his plan. And his plan has been good. Have there been some challenges and some rough times? Yeah, but even he brought me through those things. And even what the enemy meant for evil, he turned for good, right? And so there's his plan. But so I have confidence looking forward to the future, right? We're believing the Lord for a house. Well, I know God already has the house. God already has that house. He already has the finances for us to get that house. We're believing to, you know, in Toronto to buy a house. So pray for his people. Uh, you know, I say that joy because one level, like pray with us and agree, but he's promised it. And I've got hope because I've watched him do it over and over and over again. He has a plan for your life and it is a good plan, right? I, I talk with this like sometimes with couples and maybe I'm just going to speak to somebody in this. But, you know, they're, oh, having a child. And they're just like, I just don't know financially, and I don't know. Or maybe they're, they're, they're going to have another child, or they feel God's calling them to step up. They're just like, I don't know. And, and here's why I say, I say, listen, here's what I've seen over and over and over again, my life and everyone else's life. Whenever you need to be there, we'll be there when you need it to be there. Right? So if you're worried about it now, you don't need it now. How am I going to afford a second child? Well, you know, or, or a third child or a fourth child. Well, you don't need to afford them right now because you don't have them right now. And by the time they get here... God will have provided for you and the provision is going to get there. But he, he's always on time. He's not necessarily going to put a whole bunch in early. Now, I wish he'd put more in early, right? Because I kind of like that. I like looking at my bank account and having a good buffer. I like having those things in place. But he just doesn't work that way. He calls us to live by faith. But he is always there because he has a plan. See, so when you really get the fact that God has a plan for your life, it changes your perspective regarding hope. Because you're going, okay, God, you got a plan here. I'm interested to see how you get it. Sometimes I'll say to someone else, just in my life, I'm like, well, I just want to see how God's going to do this one. And I'm not doubtful. I'm actually very expected going, well, I know he's going to do it, right? Sometimes here at the church, I go, well, I know he's going to do it because he promised it, but I'm just kind of wondering how he's going to pull this one off. I'm also excited to see how he does it. I'm excited to see where the provision comes from. I'm excited to see how the open doors are there. Why? Because I understand the fact that he has a plan for my life. It is a good plan. It is a plan to give me a future and a hope. And I want to encourage you in that same thing today. Get a fresh revelation today that he has a plan for your life, and it's a good plan. And that let that, that perspective just permeate your soul. And what you'll find is hope just starts to rise. Hope rises. You become far more hopeful because, you know, this isn't just up to me. This isn't just up to chance. I can't imagine living with just thinking it's just a chance and hopefully things roll my way. No, no. God's got a plan for my life. It's a good plan, and because of that, I can be filled with hope. So let me just pray for you right now today for a fresh revelation of the plan of God for your life, and it will fuel hope, and we will be the prisoners of hope. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you today 
for your plan for our lives. I thank you that you have a good plan, a plan to give us a future and a hope. We can put our trust and our faith in your plans for our lives. And because you have the plan already laid out, we can be filled with hope because we know that good is coming to us. Even if we go through a hard season, even if we have some bad things happen to us, we can still be confident that good is coming. Yeah, it's hard on the flesh. It's hard sometimes, but through your power, we can still do that. So we love you and we thank you for us in Jesus' name. Everyone agreed, said, amen. All right, well, it's been great to spend some time together digging into the word of God. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. If this video blessed you, can you hit the like button that helps it get to more people? And would you mind sharing it with somebody and just find someone who needs to know about God's plan for their life. Send them a link. See what happens to life. All right, well, we're going to be back again on Monday and coming back with a continued study on being prisoners of hope. I look forward to seeing you online in our worship expression this coming weekend. We're also going to be talking more about hope. We're going to talk about the God of hope and how we can abound in hope. So I look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Remember, we are prisoners of hope.